George Bruno with the 21 report. We're at the 21 summit. The year is 2020, and I'm talking to Mr. Elliot Hulse. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, as always. Yeah. So you were on three stages already. 21 convention, the 22 convention, and the mm -hmm. patriarch convention. That's right. Three different demographics. Yeah, I guess you could say that with one mission. Tell us that mission. Well, making men strong again is not just about men, because when men are strong again, women can settle into their space in life. If men are protecting and providing at the borders, women can create and cultivate on the inside. And so there, we're better together. It's, a, it's teamwork, right? And then as far as patriarch, father, God the Father, the pattern, patriarchs, it's about where we're all going with this stuff, right? You mean men and women are not enemies? Well, you know, one of my talks was about how we have been psychologically subverted. We've been, the great brainwashing has happened. And, uh, and a part of it, or, or really the root of it, has been destroy the family. Yes. How do you destroy the family, right? You want to destroy a culture, you got to destroy the family. Yeah. And so we've taken the bait, uh, hook, line, and sinker of reversing the order in the home by turning men against women. So it's just a sign of the diabolical disorientation that we're all under, where men and women that who are, I mean, what's more basic than life than male and female, have been topsy-turvied, turned yeah. around, yeah. perverted. So it's not battle of the sexes. We're not battling each other. Oh, we are now. We are now. Right, yeah, because we're all confused. Yeah. Yeah, women are fighting with men, and men can't figure out women, and we really are battling. And that's why things are crumbling. That's why things are falling apart. That's why there's the suicide rate is so high. This is why men are in jail, men are on drugs. Uh, women are not happy. They've killed over 60 million of their own babies in the womb. They're on psychological medication. Uh, they're raising more children by themselves and putting more children behind bars because s I think it was something like 93% of the people in prison are men and something like 73% of them are from single mother homes. Wow. And I think I heard that 100% of all these, you know, uh, school shootings are happening by boys that are raised by their mommies. I actually saw another a meme that I thought of uh, that showed Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. He has two sons. This was funny. He's got two sons, one that he raised and one that his wife raised. The one he raised is all, you know, looking good, in shape, looks like he's got his shit together. The one that his mother raised, fat, sloppy. Interesting. Yeah. So they need us and we need them. Feminism is cancer. It's not working. It's destroying the family, destroying women, destroying children, destroying men. Destroying our culture. That's really been the plan. The plan from the beginning has been to destroy the West, and the West is crumbling. From the family on outward. Yeah. It's almost as if they succeeded. Yeah, they absolutely have. And so my first talk d dives into that they. You know, we say they. What do, what do you mean by, mean by they? Well, there's a literal they. And it. what I sh showed is that when Marxism didn't take hold after the fall of the Soviet Union, or I'm sorry, uh, after uh, you know, the Bolshevik Revolution, mm -hmm. that all happened in Russia, but they just couldn't get it with bombs and bullets to happen in Bavaria and, and so forth. It stuck for a little bit, then it went away. Uh, two men, but one by the name of uh, Gramsci and the other one was Lucas, uh, came together with the idea that, well, if we're not going to be able to create this great class warfare because the middle, you know, especially in America because the middle class is growing, they're not going to fight. Uh, we got to subvert the institutions. We got to get into the media. We got to get into the churches. We got to get into the schools. We got to get into Hollywood. And what Uri Benzinoff calls demoralize. You have to completely demoralize the culture. And so you could see that we're there now. We're completely demoralized. 
I talked to one man after another. Hell no, I wouldn't get married. No way. That's just like the mantra of so right. many men. Because we've been turned against our fathers. And when you're turned against your father, you're turned against, turned against the father. Mm -hmm. And when that all takes place, there's no families, there's no children. And a part of their agenda is to depopulate the planet. Mm -hmm. So that's why secular, uh, liberal, left-leaning people don't have babies. Half of them are confused about their gender, and the other half think they're saving the planet by not making babies. And a lot of it has to do with father hatred, hmm. man hatred. Mm -hmm. You spoke on the stage of the 22 convention, which has been called Make Women Great Again. How do we make women great again? <laughs> women are great. Women are amazing. But women also need men to mirror. And like I said, we're better together. And so my talk was about making wives great again. Because a woman's best place in society, her the, the flowering of her potential in life is to be a mother. I don't care what you say about progress, a woman in a, in a pants suit climbing the corporate ladder is not a better woman than the one that is caring for her children, raising up the next generation, putting healthy food on the table, and caring for her home. I don't care how many millions of dollars this progressive woman has made climbing the corporate ladder, she's not a great woman. She's great at pretending to be a man, and she'll always be less of a man, playing to be a man, pretending to be a man, than this woman that fulfills her huge potential. Motherhood is possible because of fatherhood. Fatherhood and motherhood are possible because man and wife, husband and wife. And so a part of this agenda to destroy our culture has produced not only one offspring that's uh, one horrible offspring, which is feminism, but that offspring has become so perverted that now we have radical feminism. Mm -hmm. And that just, we call that intersectionalism, and that's a, a totally different ballpark. Mm -hmm. But if we back up for just a moment, feminism has literally, and its stated goal has been to destroy the family, to take the need for the father out of the home, mm -hmm and to give women this false ego. Um, at the same time, men have become emasculated. Men have become effeminate. Men are now mirroring, mirroring women, as opposed to the other way around, because you know, we're disoriented. What's good is bad, and what's bad is good. What's up is down, and, with that, you know, and everything's backwards. Man is woman, woman is man. So um, my talk was about how to be a virtuous wife. How to be a great wife. Now, I'm not a wife, but I got a great wife. I've been dating my wife since we were teenagers. I've been with the same woman. I married my high school girlfriend. Why? Because she has all the marks of a great woman, a great wife. And so my talk was just simply showing how the traditional conservative gender roles being played in a home plays out for the better. All of her feminist friends, they're all friggin' divorced. All the strong, independent women, they're miserable. Yeah. My wife is a wife. She submits to my authority. She's not oppressed. Yeah. She lives in feminine luxury. Yeah. As a result of going back to the traditional roles rather than the perverted roles that feminism and Marxism has poured out for us. What is a woman's highest calling? What do you think? Motherhood, motherhood, that's magic. We can't do that. I think men do a lot of our building, and a lot of you know, creating empires, creating business, all these things that we do because we lack in the ability to do, to create the most magnificent thing, which is a hum another human being. There's no higher calling, higher purpose, more magnificent thing that a human being can do than to create another life. But you know, because when we took God out of our culture,
we've took the, the, the value of life out of our culture. Mm. So people even see that as, you know, uh, making babies, there's something even like denigrating about making babies and much less being a baby maker, I don't wanna be a money maker. So it's been, you know, totally turned around and, and made perverted, but the fact is that women are turning against their superpower. It's almost like Superman and Batman, I like to use this example. Superman has inherent power. Superman has inherent power, he's born with it. Batman had to figure shit out. He needs to use tools, you know how guys like tools? He had to figure out how to use tools, figure stuff out. Why would Superman get jealous of Batman and be like, hey, he gets to use all those tools. That's not fair. Look at Batman doing what Batman's doing. I'm going to negate, turn away, and be, uh, and have animosity towards my superpower that I was born with so I can go and be like Batman. Superman's better than Batman. Mm. Women are better than men in that regard in that they're born with inherent value. Women are valued for what they are. Men are valued for what we can do. But you got women turning away from their value and trying to be men. It's a shame. Men Women are valued for what they are. Men are valued for what they do. For what we can do, what we can provide. Explain yeah. that. Let's go into that. Well, what do men value most about women? How they look. Just the fact that they are. Yeah. The way they look, the way they smell, and guess what they got between their legs? Yes. Something we want, yes. something they didn't earn. Yeah. They don't do anything for that. Yeah. You were born with that. Born with it. What do men, what do women value in men? What we work for. Status, Status. money, provisions. We gotta, we gotta get ours, we gotta work for ours. Mm -hmm. They just get it, they just born with it. Mm -hmm. That's deep, but that's how we're wired, isn't it? That's not and a, it's okay. That's not a social construct. No, that, it's all right. It's all right. It's that way, but we got to recognize yeah. and live by that, yeah. and not cast that into the shadow and pretend that that's something. You know, a part of what cultural Marxism has done, and ultimately today we call it political correctness. Yeah. You can't say what's true. You can only say what's nice. Mm. And so we got to point out that there are these various truths, whether you like them or not, or they make you feel good or not but they need to be honored, otherwise we're gonna be lost. A woman I know said she feels like that she was brainwashed by society. Yeah. How do you reverse that? What's the remedy? What's the antidote for brainwashing? Well, going back to Yuri Benzinov, who was, or Benzimov, Benzimov Russian guy. <laughs> uh, he was a KGB defector. And he understood why and how the great ideological subversion was being infiltrating the West, the great brainwashing, basically. Mm -hmm. It's a, just a fancy term for brainwashing. Mm -hmm. And what he called demoralization, the founders of cultural Marxism, I talked about uh, um, George Lucas and uh, Gramsci, uh, they, by their own words, their own words, I quoted them in there in my first talk, I can't remember their quotes, but I'm gonna say it the best way I can remember right now, is that if we want to destroy the West, this is essentially what they want to do, if we're gonna destroy the culture, because they want that, it's not like maybe that'll happen, no, our, our intent is to win over the West, destroy, and, you gotta, and the way to do that, you gotta demoralize them, destroy their culture. The main thing, specifically from Gramsci, who was Italian, he said was you have to de-Christianize the West. Mm -hmm. He says that's the main thing you gotta do. Demoralize was the term used by Benzinimov. Mm -hmm. <laughs> De-Christianize was the word used by the founder, um, Gramsci. Well, you can see what's happened. We've completely become atheist. atheist. Atheistic people have, nothing has any meaning, so nothing has any value. So I can kill my baby in the womb. I can tattoo my eyeballs and think people are supposed to believe that. I can allow my four-year-old son to cut his dick off and give him hormones so he can become a little girl because nothing means anything. So in essence, what they've done 
is something that's been done in societies over and over again, and you can see it, a part of the reason, you know, this great brainwashing that has brought us atheism has turned us completely against the Bible, has turned us completely against God. Uh, had, you know, in the, in, in, the, in the Bible it talks about the Antichrist. The Antichrist isn't a person. Now, so you guys tricked into thinking like the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is an attitude. We're in an Antichrist attitude. Mm -hmm. I had it, most of us have it. You say Jesus Christ, people cringe. I get it, now that I get it, I can see it. Complete Antichrist. That process happens over and over again in the Old Testament. If you just look, God tries to help the people out, but then they go worship devils. And we're living in a devil worship time. That's what all the abortion's about. It's child sacrifice. And that's just one piece of it. But, you know, they screw up. Things get real hard. God comes back, says, I'm going to give you another chance. You know, good times create hard, hard good times create weak men. Mm -hmm. And weak men create hard times. And hard times create strong men, you know, so on and so forth. That's the same thing. It just keeps happening and happening. But what ultimately has to happen now is come back to the Father. we got to come back to the Father. During my patriarch talk, what I pointed out is that where we're at right now is a matriarchy. Everybody, you know where you are when you, when you sense what people hate. And there's so much hate against the patriarchy. Why? Because we're in a matriarchy. And so they don't want, and it's going to go back the other way again because strong men have to come back. Mm -hmm. So this return to the Father that is inevitable, history, it's repeatable in history over and over again. We're at it now. When we live in a matriarchy, men become effeminate. The Father is taken out of the home. There's no God, so on and so forth. The next phase, when we come back to you know, the hard times are gonna create strong men, it's a return to the Father. The return to the Father is the figurative Father and the, literal, and the literal Father. God, the Father, and Father in the home. So what we need to do is restore that order. Men, stop thinking we're, own, we're our own gods, humble ourselves, and allow God and His Son to be our example, the perfect man, and God the Father, and let that trickle down into our love for our wives and let the children be obedient to the parents. Right now we got that upside mm -hmm. down. Where the children rule the family and then the mother does everything the children wants and the father just does whatever the wife wants. So once that, once that order is, once, is reestablished again, we've got patriarchy again. We got God the Father who reigns, his son as our example, and men being men again, being fathers. And with that, it's men above women. Men are the leaders. Men came first. That, you don't like, no one likes to hear that right now, but that's the order, that's the natural order, that's the right way. Why? Because we're stronger. We're stronger, so you know what that means? We have more authority. You know what that means? We have more responsibility. I don't care how that makes you feel, but the fact is that everything that a woman has is because men have given it to them because we're stronger. We could take everything away from them right now if we want to. Mm -hmm. But they feel, you know, feminism has given them this whole upright feeling about themselves. I'm not calling for wife beating. <laughs> That's not the point. But the point is, we're stronger, and, and the stronger party can always take away what you got. Don't yeah. forget that. Yeah. Right now, because the state is your daddy, things seem okay. Divorce courts, you know, everything's against the man because the state has become the daddy. That's how the state gains its power. It kicks the father out and becomes the father. Um, but the state could take that away just like that, can it? The state's going to crumble. St and it's, it's on its way. You see it with the turmoil. The state ain't going, that, that's a dad, that's a false daddy. Yeah. And false daddies crumble. False daddies fall. And so when false daddy, and you know, now because mommy's so, so pervasive, Mommy is, we live in a matriarchy. They even get to the point where they don't, they want to defund the police and whatnot. Oh, oh, wait, you just wait. Start defunding the police. Start destroying all forms of authority. Let the government crumble and then guess what? Natural order will reign. Natural order will come back. Yeah. It's going to collapse. And then we're just going to, and, and it's not me calling for this. This is the cycle. This is what's going to happen. There's chaos and order. Nature. Chaos and order. So let there be chaos. You're, a part of the left's problem is that they're creating their own demise. Mm -hmm. 
Like I said, they're not making any babies, and they're calling for the breakdown of authority. Okay, you're going to be outnumbered because you ain't making no babies, and you break down authority, feminism goes away. Roaming gangs of men now become the authority. Yeah. I remember seeing something about some mouse utopia experiment where the, 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 the mice were breeding, and it got to the point where the female mice that gave birth were killing their offspring, and eventually all, all the mice died. Mm -hmm. And it was just <laughs> like this microcosm of society. Interesting. I don't think it's a coincidence that, like I know you and Jesse Lee Peterson did not sit down and have a talk about agreeing on things. He talks about returning to the Father. You're talking about returning to the Father. Steve Williams, returning to the Father. He, what's he say? Are yeah. you the man of the house or the man of the house? Or mm. something, man mm -hmm. in the house or of the house? Mm -hmm. And there's this theme about returning to the Father. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's spreading like wildfire. Everyone is coming to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. And I know y'all didn't get together and say, mm -hmm. okay, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Everyone's feeling it mm -hmm. and teaching it. And I'm hearing it over and over and over. Return to the Father. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. It, it's an archetype. It's a pattern. Even the word Father comes from the word pattern. And it's yeah. a pattern that we've seen over and over again. And we're just at the turnover of the next phase in a pattern that's happened over and over again. We're just sensing the zeitgeist. It's, you know, we feel it, we hear it, we know it, it's coming back. So when you know, we talk in terms of the future is patriarchy, that's not wishful thinking. <laughs> that's, hey, this is what's up, this is what's next. You better figure it out or you're gonna fall. Because mm -hmm. if poopy hits the fan, mm -hmm. Men are going to rule. Right. The strongest men will rule. Yeah. Right now we have the weakest men ruling. Right. Isn't that strange? Isn't that funny? Mm hmm Interesting. Backwards times. Wow. Where can people find out more about Elliot Hulse? Um, sometimes on YouTube, a lot of times on Instagram. Elliot Hulse, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, two L's, two T's, H-U-L-S-E. Google me. My you, my uh, website is ElliotHulse.com. Uh, I'm always doing weird things, something different. So, mm -hmm. you know, follow along, see what I'm up to. And if mm -hmm. you like what I talk about, stick around. You, you are kind of like the interval training of social media. You're just, you keep us all guessing. <laughs> you yeah. just, you just, on all these different platforms that you're at. TikTok. I'm making TikToks. Now, I don't make TikToks, but I have my team take my videos and TikTok, TikTok them up. What are there? What thirty second, sixty second videos or something, I think or so, yeah. just like real quick things? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Which is kind of indicative of the uh, short attention span culture, in a sense. I so, tell you, I hate it. And if you can't, if if you can't roll with it, you got to learn to roll. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. like it, but the reality is, there are people who will respond to thirty second sound bites mm -hmm. more than a, you know, twenty minute interview. Mm -hmm. Is where they're at. You know, Jesus said, be a fisher of men. Well, you got to give them the bait that they want. Yeah. Right? I ain't going to fish with men, fish men with bait that they don't want to eat. Yeah. I like this that. is what you're eating? Well, I'm really in. I am never let down with a conversation with Mr. Elliot Hulse. Thank you, sir. Thank you.